Greetings everyone, Peter Canego here. I'm on the Volland Dam, Holland America's smallest and oldest ship. She's in San Diego today, and I think she's one of the nicest ships in the Holland America fleet. She looks great. Well, certainly by today's standards, Holland America Line's 60,906 gross ton, 1,432 passenger Volendam is considered small to mid-size. By comparison, the line's newest and largest ships, the three-member Pinnacle class, represented by the 2021 built Rotterdam shown here, measures 99,935 gross tons and carries 2,668 passengers. And by the way, a full top to bottom tour of this state of the art ship can also be enjoyed on the Midship Cinema YouTube channel. Now back to our Volendam, which has a particularly handsome profile with a long clipper bow and well proportioned superstructure topped with the streamlined, rather traditional funnel. She was built by Italy's Fincantieri shipyard in Marghera, near Venice, and christened on November 12, 1999, by tennis superstar Chris Evert. The Volendam was the second ship in Holland America's four-member R-Class, which was named for the 1998-built Rotterdam. While sporting the same dimensions and layout, the Rotterdam featured twin uptake funnels that were inspired by the previous 1959-built SS Rotterdams, which was one of Holland America's longest-lived and most beloved ships. The R-Class ships were actually expanded and modified versions of the S-Class, which were named for the 1993-built Statendam. These ships measured 55,451 gross tons and carried 1,258 passengers and included the 1993-built Mazdam, the 1994-built Rhindam, and the 1996-built Veendam, all of which were distinguished by their angular fin funnels that to me, and I know this may sound a little strange, resembled backwards penguins. The four popular S-Class ships and two of the R-Class ships have since been sold, leaving just two of the R-Class ships in the fleet. I first encountered the Volendam in Fort Lauderdale during one of her U.S. inaugural cruises. At the time, there was a lot of industry buzz about her dark interior decor, which featured rich jewel tones with polished brass accents. Purple and magenta were especially prevalent. Love it or not, the HAL ships of that era had their own distinctive style, which was the brainchild of Utrecht-based architect Franz Dingemans, much as the Carnival ships had their own look with entertainment-themed interiors by Joe Farkas, and the Princess ships did with their beige pastels by Teresa Anderson. As soon as you stepped aboard, you knew what brand it was. On today's ships, the decor is more generic and less well-defined. Another nice touch about this era of Holland America ships was their connection with the line's storied past. The cabin alleyways were lined with black and white photos of past ships celebrating the company's now 150-year history. And you didn't have to be a die-hard ship lover to appreciate the magnificent oils by Bermuda-based Stephen Card, which are a staple in the forward stair towers of every new build until recently. There are only three Volendams and a lot more decks, so Card also did paintings of the 1929-built Statendam, the Nordam of 1938, and the magnificent New Amsterdam of 1938, passing the first Volendam. Thankfully, these paintings and the black and white photos can still be enjoyed on the Volendam to this day. In the year 2000, Volendam was followed by both the Amsterdam, which shared twin uptakes and co-flagship status with the Rotterdam, and her look-alike, the Zondam, which is now the only other R-Class ship in the Holland America fold. In her now 25 years with Holland America, the handsome Volendam has enjoyed a successful and thankfully uneventful career. 
In 2009, she was given a refit that expanded her fore and aft superstructure, providing more space for the spa, as well as a new terrace atop the youth center. Between May and September of 2022, she was chartered by the city of Rotterdam to house Ukrainian refugees and following another refit, returned to cruising for Holland America. Well, now it's time to go aboard. So let's take the elevator up and then climb some exterior stairs to Sky Deck, the uppermost of Volendam's 10 passenger decks. Sky Deck is sheltered by glass screens on three sides, is ideal for forward facing panoramic views and has lots of open sunning space. The ship's coins, which include an American quarter and a Dutch 25 cent piece before the advent of the Euro, are still mounted in the base of the mast. From Sky Deck, there's also a nice aft facing view over the midship's pool area. Sports Deck begins with a 250 seat crow's nest, which provides spectacular views through its angled full length windows. Holland America has some of the best observation lounges at sea, and this space looks better than ever with its new furnishings and soft fittings. There are nice nooks of seating on its aft port and starboard sides, making this a great spot to catch up on a good read or just watch the sea roll by. Like all Holland America ships, the Volendam boasts a multi-million dollar art collection with specially commissioned and curated multimedia works. After the crow's nest, Sports Deck continues with the running track that encircles the sliding glass dome over the Lido pool area. Nearby, there are shuffleboard courts on the starboard side and more open deck space to port. The funnels on Volendam and Zandam have a traditional shape that recalls the long gone N-class ships New Amsterdam and Nordam of the early 80s, but with the addition of four pairs of angled rings that give them a futuristic flair. On either side of the funnel, there's a netted in games court for basketball, deck tennis, and pickleball. A pair of youth facilities can be found at the aft end of sports deck. On the port side, there's the clubhouse playroom, and to starboard, there's the loft teen center. Wrapping up sports deck, there's a pair of sunning platforms and a terrace that overlooks the sea view pool area. Deck eight, Lido deck. Lido deck begins with an open observation wing on the port side that can be accessed via the fitness center which along with the greenhouse spa was expanded forward in the 2009 refit. The fitness center has an excellent assortment of cardio equipment and weight machines, as well as space for aerobics and spinning classes. The entrance to the greenhouse spa is on the port side and adjacent to it is a beauty salon for hair, nails, and other treatments. There's another open wing on the starboard side. This is accessed via the thermal suite, which was expanded forward into the former observation deck in 2009. The thermal suite has a whirlpool, heated tile loungers, and two steam rooms, including a Turkish style hammam.
Just after the thermal suite, there's a relaxation room with six cushioned wicker loungers and a spectacular view that can be enjoyed before and after spa treatments. The women's changing area is nearby, and for that matter, so is the smaller men's. There's also a variety of treatment rooms, some with a view, and others for couples. The spacious Lido pool area continues after the spa and features a poolside casual eatery called Dive In, which serves burgers, fries, tacos, and other on-the-go bites. Nestled between a pair of jacuzzis in the especially large pool, there's a dolphin sculpture by Susanna Holt. The pool itself is set under a retractable all-weather steel and glass dome and is served by the Lido bar on its aft end. Ballendam's floral decorative theme is well represented in the aft Lido deck stair tower with Tim McGuire's epic flowers painting on an aluminum panel. At the forward starboard end of the Lido marketplace, Canaletto is the Italian specialty restaurant. As of 2023, it commands a $19 cover charge per guest and reservations are highly recommended. Near the entrance to Canaletto, there's a carved stone statue of the Roman god of the seas, Neptune. The Lido Market is Volendam's casual dining experience, offering stunning views from its span of full-length windows. Unlike some shipboard buffets where guests help themselves, the staff dishes up courses upon request. The Lido Market has an excellent variety of international cuisines and menus that change on a daily basis. There's an excellent sushi bar with plenty of ginger and wasabi to chase it down with. One of the best salad bars afloat with market fresh vegetables. A deli with delicious sandwiches. fresh fruit and made-to-order pasta dishes, a carvery with all sorts of savory side dishes, fresh from the oven pizza, fruits, fresh baked breads, cheeses, and cold cuts, and most importantly, desserts. And while the views here are priceless, dining here, of course, is included in the fare. The Sea View Pool area, which is served by the Sea View Bar on its starboard side, wraps up Lido Deck. Deck 7, Navigation Deck. After the wheelhouse and officer's quarters, Navigation Deck is dedicated to suites and staterooms. A nice directional touch in the alleyways are the profiles of a Pinnacle class ship facing forward. And speaking of Pinnacles, the 1126 square foot Pinnacle suite on this deck is the largest on board, featuring a bedroom with a king size bed, a marbled bathroom with a jacuzzi tub, upgraded Elemis toiletries, and a living room with a large flat screen TV. The Pinnacle Suite has a separate dining room with its own private galley and pantry, a guest bathroom, and a large balcony with full-length loungers and a dining nook. Pinnacle and Neptune Suites come with access to the concierge-style Neptune Lounge, which has complimentary snacks and beverages on a round-the-clock basis. 
Just steps away from the Neptune Lounge, 28 563 square foot Neptune suites are among the finest in the Holland America fleet. They feature a bedroom with a king size bed, a living room with a convertible sofa, and perks that include free beverages, a digital sound system, use of binoculars, and an espresso machine with a selection of brews and even a choice of brown or white sugar. Neptune Suites also have a walk-in closet with a dressing and makeup table and a bathroom with a whirlpool bath. And possibly best of all, huge teak lined balconies with a dining nook. Next up, Volendam has 168, 283 square foot Vista Suites that are located on navigation and veranda decks. These can either be configured with a queen or two double beds. A curtain divides the bedroom from the sitting area and all feature perks like bathrobes, LME's toiletries, and upon request, fresh fruit, ice, and shoeshine service. Suite 7088 is one of Volendam's wheelchair access cabins with a modified bathroom and an aft corner balcony with sill ramps. And wrapping up navigation deck, there's a terrace with seating that overlooks the Volendam's wake. Deck 6, Veranda Deck. Veranda deck begins with a nice terrace overlooking the bow, and like navigation deck, is devoted to accommodations, most of which are Vista suites. This is one with a queen bed configuration and a standard bathroom with a whirlpool tub. And in the bathroom, refillable dispensers are stocked with Elemis toiletries. And this is a standard Vista suite balcony. On aft veranda deck, there's another seating area overlooking the wake. During my visit, I ran into a carpenter who was restoring those gorgeous solid tea cap rails to their prime condition. Deck 5, Upper Promenade Deck. Upper Promenade Deck is fully devoted to public rooms, beginning with the top level of the 557-seat World Stage Theater. Now with a slightly toned down color scheme, it was originally the Franz Hall Lounge and has excellent sight lines. The world stage is followed by the boutique on the port side overlooking Volendam's three-deck tall atrium that features Venetian artist Luciano Vistosi's Murano glass sculpture Kaleido, which takes its inspiration from a kaleidoscope. One of my favorite spaces on the Volendam overlooks the starboard side of the atrium. Another long since toned down space, the 110 seat ocean bar has great views and a bandstand presiding over its brass dance floor. Like all of the ships in the Holland America fleet, Volendam is filled with spectacular floral displays. The casino occupies a wide swath of real estate on the aft port side of the atrium, while the main walkway veers off on an angle to the starboard side. In the 2009 refit, the mix bar, which is situated between the casino and the shopping arcade, replaced the casino bar. This whole section of the ship was restyled with a toned down lighter look and in addition to the casino, includes the restyled piano bar, which is directly aft of the mix. We'll continue aft along the starboard upward promenade deck passage past a giant mural depicting the old world that is inboard of the Explorer's Lounge, which is now used with its auditorium style seating, primarily for classical recitals. Calor, 
Now let's head back over to the port side where we left off at the casino. The passage here begins with a glass dress sculpture by Petula Berm leading to the Hudson Room, a 40 seat meeting room originally called the Half Moon. When not reserved for meetings, this room is used for bridge tournaments. Pretty much every nook on this ship is occupied with an artwork. In that 2009 refit, the original Hudson Lounge and the library were merged into one large space with the addition of a coffee bar. As Exploration's Cafe, it is now the go-to place to purchase espresso drinks and snacks, have a good read, and work on that jigsaw puzzle. Steps aft, the Queen's Room, originally a private dining room, is now used for arts and crafts classes. While its complement on the starboard side, the King's Room still functions as a private dining room. Originally called the Rotterdam Dining Room, and now given the bland generic title of just the dining room, the double deck space at the aft end of upper promenade and promenade decks is probably nicer looking now than ever with its lighter color scheme. Those twin grand staircases, towering chandeliered ceilings, and even the aft seating terraces overlooking the wake make dining here an event. Deck four, promenade deck. Occasionally, the long forecastle area on promenade deck is opened up for scenic cruising in places like Alaska and the Panama Canal. The lower level of the world stage begins the interior portion of promenade deck. Continuing aft on the port side, there's the recently redesigned photo gallery. The guest services and shore excursions desks flank the middle level of the atrium. Farther aft, just outside the Wayang Theater, there's a lobby that's occasionally used as an art gallery and a wine bar. The 165-seat Wayang Theater is used for movie screenings and meetings. Across the way on the port side, there's the 88-seat Pinnacle Grill Specialty Restaurant. As of late 2023, this immensely popular steakhouse commanded a $39 cover charge and featured a Pacific Rim-inspired menu. It was originally the Italian Marco Polo restaurant, hence the Venetian-themed decor and the Murano glass chandeliers. The passage veers aft from here on a diagonal, ending up at the aft staircase lobby. Along the way, numerous port plaques are displayed, including one from the second Volendam, the former Brazil of 1958. Promenade deck resumes on the aft side of the galley with the lower level of the spectacular dining room. Lower promenade deck is fully encircled by a wide teak line promenade. Sadly, this liner like feature has become a lost start on most of today's ships. 3.5 times around equals a mile. In addition to a full deck of accommodations, Lower prom deck is home to the bottom level of the atrium. Deck 
here, you can get up close to examine the iridescent detailing of Luciano Vistosi's Kaleido column. This lobby is also home to the future cruises desk and hotel manager's office. In 2009, many of the ocean view cabins on this level were converted into lanai suites by replacing a picture window with a sliding glass door that opens onto the promenade. And each of these lanais comes with a pair of reserved cushioned deck chairs. Here's a standard 197 square foot ocean view cabin for comparison. The bathrooms for these and the interiors feature showers in lieu of tubs. The next level main deck is also dedicated to passenger accommodations. Among those are more economically priced 182 square foot interiors. We'll wrap it up here on the lowest level dolphin deck, which is home to the medical center and more accommodations. As always, thanks again for joining me on this deck top to bottom tour of the beautiful Volendam. I've never been up there.